Okay, so today I'm going to be making a new stand for my lathe. I drew up some plans. I used my trusty architectural ruler so I could get it to scale. Um, this stand isn't heavy enough, and I need more weight because when I'm turning larger bowls and stuff, the lathe tends to shake. So I want to get some more weight. I'm going to put sandbags on there. Uh, I have 100 pounds of sand to put in a little box that I have driven on my plan. And I'm hoping that that will get rid of the vibration and the sand will help dampen the vibration on top of that. So I got some material. I got five 2 by 6 by 8 a uh, sheet of plywood, and maybe a couple other random things. Uh, so let's start cutting these 2 by 6s up. We'll get them rough cut and start making the legs. I'm going to start there. Okay, so here my, here's my two by sixes. I got my plans here. So I'm going to take my ruler and measure off the length of these pieces uh, so I can get them down exactly to size. So it looks like these are going to be 28 inches long, which makes exact sense. So I'm going to need four legs, so I need four pieces at 28. So I got a mark here. I'll set up a stop on the miter saw and I'll cut four exact. So now I'm going to put some pocket hole screws, I think three on each side, and then screw these two pieces together. I got both legs done now. The next thing to do is to put a piece across the top so that I have my width and then I can start building everything off of that. So that piece from my plans is 36 inches. So I'm going to cut a 2x6 36 inches, go across, and then uh, the basic frame of this will be put together and everything else will just work off of that. Alright, I got these handy clamps. So I'm going to put this here to make sure that when I screw this on, it's square.
and I'm going to pre-drill these so that I don't split out the wood. So the next thing I guess I'm going to have to do is start building out the box on the bottom so I have a place to put my sandbags. And it's got to be strong because I'm putting 100 pounds of sand in there. Okay, so now that I got the legs framed up, I want to add another piece of 2x6 here to really tie this all together. Um, and it's going to be the side of my sandbox. these screws too, just so that I have less movement. So now we'll do the same thing on the other leg. Okay, so now the next step is to put a 2x6 going this way to connect the two halves of the legs. Okay, so I got my two boards cut at 33 inches. So if I stick these on here, squeeze them together. When I measure this, I should be at 36. And I am. So we're going to glue and screw one side at a time. That fits good right there, and I'm going to use pocket screws, uh, probably just three of them. Alright, so like I said before, I have this reference line on the back. I'm going to line that up. Okay, let's put that bottom piece in, see how that's going to fit. Now I purposefully left a little bit of <clears throat> two by four left here um, so that I can put a trim piece and cover this plywood. I know it's just a laid stand and it really doesn't matter, but I like to stay in the practice of hiding um, the plywood stuff for when I make furniture or something. <clears throat> and by doing it now, it teaches me to remember to leave extra space so that I can put that cover piece there when I do a real piece of furniture. Plus, this is going to look a lot nicer because of it. <clears throat> so now we're just going to drive some screws down around here. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I don't want to put a lot of screws in here, 
because if I need to get to the sand, I want to be able to do that quickly and easily. And thinking of that now, I should cut this three quarters of an inch short so that I can just take out this bottom panel should I need to. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is just screw these on here, and then I'll recut the bottom piece so that it fits in and I can lift it up. Alright, so that time I measured twice. Let's see if I only cut once. Looks like I'm a little snug and I need to take off maybe a 30 second. Alright, I want to show you what I did here. I can't take off half of a blade's width without taking out some of my fence. So I have this scrap piece of 2x6 from the project. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I brought the fence up to inch and a half, which will just shave off a little bit of this. I stopped the saw, so now the blade is buried into the 2 by a little bit. I'm just going to put some clamps on here to hold this. Now when I run this piece that I screwed up the cut on the first time, I can take off just a little sliver and it should fit good on when I go put it back in. Okay, so now I've cut, I've measured twice, I've cut twice, and I had to do half a blade's width so we did that little trick with the table saw. Let's see if it fits this time. Just perfect. And what I'm looking for here is that these sides are on the same level as this, so this is flush, and then the sides are sticking out just a little bit. So actually what I'm going to do is pull these out and use that same setup that I have on the table saw just to shave off a little bit on the outside so that these match up. And because these are almost square, I need to keep track of which side I'm cutting, so I'm just going to take one at a time. sides and the bottom are all perfectly flush, so when I put my trim pieces on, it'll all line up and it'll look pretty. So now we can go ahead and put all the screws that we want to put in to hold this together. Pre-drilling on this project has been working out really good, so I'm going to continue with that, especially on these smaller edges that I have here. Now for the bottom, like I said, I don't want a lot of screws in here because if I have to get access to the sandbox, I want to be able to do that kind of easily. So uh, I think we'll just put four, maybe one more in the front. So let's get these two in the back. Good. I should be able to take this up when I need to. Now, I'm going to need a top piece that's going to get screwed to these 2 by 6s and I'm also going to need some kind of a divider, which is again going to create a problem when I need to take this piece out. Right now I'm thinking my backup plan is to fill 
and or unfill this bottom sandbox by having some help and just flipping it over and accessing a sheet of plywood that's going to go on the bottom. And if that's the case, then I can put I need to put a whole bunch more screws in here so that when I flip it over, the whole thing doesn't just fall out. So I'm going to think on that, and then I'll get back to the video and making this, and I'll let you know what I decide. Okay, so I decided to forego trying to make this come out, and I'll just use the bottom as an access panel. I'm not expecting to have to get in there much, if ever, so I think that's just the way to go. So we'll put some more screws in here. Um, I cut the other two pieces from the top, so I'm going to glue these down and screw them, and then I will attach the top panel, which is this one. I'll put this up here, and then I'll put that <coughs> divider panel in, which is going to go here, and I'm going to have drawers on this side and some storage for my lathe chisels over here as long as everything else goes according to plan. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over and attach that top piece of the cabinet. Oh. And here you can see that nice big cavity that I'm going to have put the sand in, and then I'll put a cap piece of uh, plywood over this and I'll put a whole bunch of screws in here so I don't have to worry about that piece falling out because of that 100 pounds of weight that I'm putting in there. Oh. This is really getting heavy. Okay, so because of my decision to keep this down, we got to put some more screws in here uh, so that when I flip it over to put the sand in, this piece doesn't just fall out. super solid. Uh, next thing to do is to fit this divider in. And what I'm going to do with that... Oh, that's right. Um, I'm going to measure this out. I want it to do 12 and a half inches. So I'll measure that out and I'll cut a spacer. And I'm going to put two pocket screws in each side and that'll hold this on and then I'll have a place to put my drawer slides and this box here will be for my lathe tools. So let's cut those pocket holes. In my infinite wisdom I've decided to sand the inside now while it's nice and easy before that divider's in and I sanded the divider already. So I'm going to give this inside a quick sand so if I decide to do a finish or a paint, it's no problem, I can just do it. Ok, 
Okay, so now we got this panel. I've drilled the 246. Took me a second to add those up. Six pocket holes. We're going to slide that in. I got to make that spacer that I talked about, and then we'll come back and screw this in. Okay, so I've got my spacer cut to 12 and a half. Lay that on the bottom. Snug it up. And just slide it to make sure that everything is fairly square. And these are uh, inch and a quarter pocket hole screws that I'm using. Okay, so that's nice and sturdy there. The next step I don't know what the next step is, so we're going to take a break and I'm going to figure it out. Okay, so I figured out the next step. The next step is going to be cutting that bottom piece. And I have a crappy piece of plywood um, that I'm going to use instead of the nice plywood that I bought for the rest of the project. Uh, and I'm going to use this uh, camphor bit just to put an edge on this and take the sharp corners off so I don't get my little feet on it when I'm stepping under it. So the side that's going to go down towards the floor, which is going to be this side, needs to get routed on that edge. Okay, so I don't know how well the camera's going to show on this, but if I put it on an angle, it should be better. Uh, now I have this nice clean mitered edge, so that will fit right in here, nice and perfect. And then I don't have a, a hard edge here in case my foot slides under it. So we are going to <coughs> pre-drill a whole bunch of holes and screw those down again with the two and a half inch screw so it's nice and strong. So now that we got uh, this bottom piece on, I'm going to give it a quick sand just to smooth it out because this is a rough, crappy piece of plywood. I don't like rough and crappy. Okay, uh, smooth enough for the bottom. And I got the edges too, so I don't get any splinters. So now the next step is to try and figure out the storage section for the lathe tools, and then I'll make those drawers for the opposite side. that 
I wanted to try and use to make dovetail drawers. I figured this is a good time to try a project like that. If I screw it up, it's not a kitchen cabinet, so it's not a big deal. I've spent the better part of a day working out different problems that I keep running into with this. Um, but I now have one drawer that's made with half-blind dovetails. So I think that I got it down right. So I'm going to cut these again. Um, and hopefully my second drawer will come out good too. So now let's uh, route the last of the three drawers on the dovetail machine and hopefully I don't make any mistakes with this one either. Okay, so we're ready to route those dados into the bottoms of these drawers, and I've already got my router table set up. Um, what I did was, just for reference, I went around and I had all these boxes put together and I put a line right where the dado is going to go on every piece. So that way, when I put it onto the router, I know that that line is where the dado needs to go and there's no more mistakes. I've been making a lot of mistakes with these drawers. So, um, I've already run this through. I set my depth at 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom, and the data will be a quarter of an inch deep. I've run my test piece already, because we want to make sure that the, the joint is going to except my bottom panel well, which it does. So now we're just going to route these through. Okay, all that's routed through, so the next step is to figure out the size of that bottom panel and cut three of those because I have three drawers. Okay, so I have dry fitted this uh, drawer and I'm going to, I have my routed out section for my plywood base. So I'm just going to measure the interior length and width. I have 14 and a half by 16 and 5 eighths. Now I know from before that I used a quarter of an inch deep 
uh, setup bar when I did my routing. So I have a quarter of an inch in on this side and a quarter of an inch in on this side, which is a half inch. So I just want to add a half inch to both of these measurements. So that'll give me 15 by 17 and an eighth. So I'm going to cut out my quarter inch plywood to 15 by 17 and an eighth and everything should just fit up nice and snug and then I can glue these half blind dovetails together and I'll have a drawer. Alright, so I came up with a, I'm hoping a neat way to store my lathe chisels. I got some 2 inch PVC and I cut out 9 holes for a front piece and a back piece, and I did it at an angle. The angle worked out to be, uh, I think it was 13 degrees for this cut on this piece of PVC, because I didn't want them to be sticking out like that. Um, so it's two inch PVC, I got nine holes in there, so I spaced it, I did a three inch grid and I just drew lines and made the intersecting points and then drilled it out with my hole saw. Um, I kind of screwed up. The back one I drilled at two and three quarter inch holes and the front one I drilled at two and a half inch hole which accepts the two inch, that's as close as I could get to the two inch PVC because the outside diameter is thicker. So, I screwed up and I cut the front holes at two and three quarters, so I put this kind of face plate on and I cut these at the right diameter and then I just glued it together so it'll all still work out okay. So if you go to make this, you don't have to drill two different size holes. You can drill just the two inch um, or two and a half inch and the two and a half inch. So what I'm going to do now, I got, I made these braces and I put some pocket holes in them, so I'm just going to put this and I'm going to screw these in here on both sides to kind of hold this together as one unit and then I'm going to cut all my PVC pipes to the same length and I'm going to put some uh, caulk or hot glue, one of the two, to kind of secure these in um, and I cut these I think it ended up working out to 11 and 5 eighths or close to that. I wasn't trying to be exact. I wanted this to be short of the back of the cabinet. Um, and what I'm going to do is put a piece of foam behind there so that my lathe chisel will go in and hit that foam, which I'll show you when I end up putting that in. So for right now, I'm just going to screw these in with some pocket holes. All right, so that's all one solid unit. Let's see if it slides into the cabinet. Alright, so we're over at the cabinet, let's see if this slides in. Well, I wouldn't say it slides in, but fits in nice. So let's see how those pipes are going to look now. This is the only one I have cut. shorter, um, I'd say a good inch. Let's cut that and see what that happens. Alright, so I cut about an inch and a half off of this. So when I slide that in, it should be perfect. Which side's up? This is up. So that'll just look like that and my tools will slide right in there. So the next step is to cut all nine pieces exactly like this one. Um, and I'll get that piece of foam that I've been holding on to for a special purpose. And we'll glue that in the back. I think I'm just going to use spray glue for that. Alright, so this is that... Uh, 
piece of foam that I've been saving is a good inch thick. I, this must have come with some tool that I bought. So I'm just gonna make a slice. So that'll fit there and I'll put some spray, spray glue on here and on the back of the cabinet and I'll just push this in and this will give my tools a nice place to rest without damaging the sharp edges. Okay so back over at the cabinet I got some 3M Super 77 as far as spray glue goes, goes I like this stuff. So we're just going to spray this, spray the back of the cabinet. And you're supposed to wait for this to set up for like 10 seconds. This has been setting up, so we're going to slide this in and stick it to the back. Okay, that's it. Uh, now I'm going to get to work on cutting those PVC pipes. Okay, I got my hot glue gun set up. I decided hot glue instead of caulk, just because it's cleaner. Um, we cut these pipes at seven degrees, and when I stuck them back in here, they didn't line up. So I took another measurement again with my digital angle gauge, and I just held that to the pipe and the board. And I came up with 12 degrees, so I recut them all to 12 degrees. And I think that the problem there might have been that this back panel moved from where I measured it from yesterday. Okay, last one. All finished. This looks like a something out of a science fiction movie. But I think that's going to look good in my cabinet. Uh, I guess that's going to be good. It's not going to move. I'm just going to stick some more glue in here where I can. Okay, the other thing that I've been thinking is that if I ever want to pull this out, it's not going to be easy. So I think what I'm going to do is just get a little handle for right here, and that'll give me the leverage to pull it out. And putting it in, I'm going to put a nailer strip in the cabinet on the bottom so that I could just tack a couple screws and that'll hold it because this isn't going to go anywhere by itself but safety first. Okay so I'm back over working on the drawers um, I got one set of drawer slides installed on the bottom and what I did for that was I just used a scrap piece of half inch and I made a spacer to fit underneath the drawer slide so those are both at the same height and then I have two lines here that I measured down from the top four inches. Four inches from here and then five inches from here because of this extra three quarters of an inch. So what I'm doing now, and this is the first time I'm doing this, I'm hoping that it'll help put the drawer slides in because I always have a problem with this. Um, I'm just gonna take this piece of wood and line it up with that line And then just tack a couple staples in quick. Like that. And I'll do the same thing down here. And 
And my hope is that that will give me somewhere to rest these drawer slides on so I can install them so that I can install them and not have to hold them, which is what's happening right now. So, I'll make that flush with the front. So now that I have all my drawer slides in, um, I could just take these out, but I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. I purposefully cut them thinner than the drawer slides, so they're not going to be in the way at all. So I just want to see if it's going to be in the way or be a problem, in which case it's just quick to take it out. to make the face places for face plates for these Okay, I ended up just stapling these on because this board's so thin that I don't have a screw that's gonna not come through from the back side. So you don't really see the staples anymore. And then I'll put a handle here, and then I'll have that last one over here. Okay, so now uh, I cut the top piece of hardboard to the same size, and I pre-drilled a bunch of sheetrock screws, and I countersunk them in. So this is just screwed down with six screws just to give the top a nicer look. Uh, I got one handle mounted, and I got the other one still to do. So I just made a quick template of the handles. So the template, uh, I just clamped it down an inch and a half. It's cut to the right length. This is just a scrap piece that I had laying around. So I just clamp that on there. Get the other side to the right height. Clamp over here. Drill the holes out.
All right, so these two screws on the bottom here, I'm going to put one here and here um, into that nailer strip that I have there just so that this can't get pulled out without taking these screws out. I don't really don't think it's going to go anywhere, but... Okay, that's nice and solid. Drawers all work good. Oh, that's rubbing a little bit. So I just got this rasp. So I got everything all done, the last thing to do is put the sand in the bottom and mount the lathe on top and that's it. So I guess the next thing we're going to do is flip this over, take this bottom panel off and load that sand in there. But we're going to do that as close to where this is going to end up as we can. Okay, so these sandbags are not going to fit in here in the bags that they're currently in, so I'm just going to use regular garbage bags. Okay, now we'll screw the top back on, or the bottom, as it were. Now the moment of truth. Okay, I am hold like because I just lifted that and I didn't think there was any chance of me doing it at all. Uh, it wasn't actually that bad. This is solid! <laughs> So I'm super excited, we're going to bolt that lathe down on here and then put a very odd shaped piece of wood on the lathe and see if all this work was worth the effort. Okay, this is the whole thing all done. I've got three drawers and if you remember those are half-blind dovetails on those drawers. That's right, I fancied it up. One, two, three. And this last handle here is just to pull that whole panel out should I ever need to get in there. And I've got four, like two inch lag bolts that are in there holding that down. If this thing moves, I'm in more serious trouble than just the movement. Chocolate fudge and red balloons, Argyle socks and the blues.